Uh, welcome to my backyard birding guide. My name is Evan Bookout, and I'm here to teach you all the basics you need to know about how to watch birds out in the field. So let's get started. So birding can be a lot of fun, but first you need to know how to identify birds if you want to, if you want to, you know, study them or or just you know watch for birds. So, um, first thing you're going to need to know is, um, how to, um, is the scientific names of birds. So, in a bird book like this, you'll see, on, in the pictures, you'll see the name of the bird, and then the scientific name of the bird, which is the Latin name of the bird. So, um, it'll say... The genus of the bird, which is how you find out what birds are related, and then the species of the bird, and sometimes there are subspecies. Think. Right. No. Oh. Back it up. Back. You got it on telephoto. All right. Now, wait. Um. What we might have to do is, you want to come hold hold the. Oh, book? I know. Hold on. Turn the turn the camera the other way, which I can do. Okay, come hold this. Here. Come is hold it recording? The Oh, it is. <laughs> Sorry. So, if you want to be able to identify birds, you're probably going to need a good book. Like this one is the voted the best of the best, the National Geographic Field Guide to the Birds of North America. So, this is how you use this book. Here is one of the pages. See, we have the gilded flicker. We have a uh, picture of the gilded flicker, and then we have um, like you know stuff that is highlights of the gilded flicker, and then we also over here we have the range of the gilded flicker. We have the genus of the gilded flicker. So we have Calaptes Trisoides, I guess. Um, and then we have the length of the gilded flicker. 20, and then 29 uh, length is 11 and a half inches, 29 centimeters. Um, and then we have, basically, it tells you about the gilded flicker. Uh, 
the, it, show, it says the voice and the range. And we also have this nifty little range map. And then sometimes there are subspecies. So um, the guild, it'll say, it'll say if there is subspecies. And, um, and then in, in this particular book, you can see a subspecies map like this one. So like here is a red-tailed hawk, but a different, but a red-tailed hawk subspecies, a merlin subspecies, a crap, a that clapper rail subspecies, a will, a willet subspecies, <laughs> and a an hill crane subspecies, and we all we have all of the range maps. And then at the back of this book, you can also see accidentals. So accidentals are extinct species. So it'll show it'll say um, places that birds that don't usually come here but have been seen here or were here but are now extinct. Okay, note that this, that all of that might not be in every book. This, I, I just, it's just in this book. So if any, if you're going to get any book, if you can get this one, I would get this one because it has the most, it was voted has the most, um, you know, bird info of probably all other bird books, so, yeah. All right, now even if you don't want you to identify, have to identify the birds, you'll probably want some good binoculars. So this is Vortex brand, um, really good binoculars. Um, so, yeah, I got these from my birthday from my grandparents. Uh, my grandma is filming this right now. Say hi. <laughs> hi. Um, so yeah, you'll want this if you want, you want one of these if you want to, um, if you want to be able to look at birds up close from far away. Recording. Okay, so now you, that you've learned the basics, um, it's time to get out in the field, so let's go. Um, so if you want to be able to watch birds close up, you're going to need to let them feel at home. So um, we have this bird feeder. If you want to keep squirrels out, you can get this. It ha it's, has this, which lets the birds peek in. There's, um, sunflower seeds in there. Um, it'll also, this ha it has a little guard that keeps the squirrels out if the squirrels want to try to steal food. Um, also, any seeds that fall, um, birds will um, pick seeds up from the ground. Also, if you want to attract hummingbirds, this is a hummingbird feeder. Um, there are different ways you can make them. Uh, the hummingbird, there's a hole in the top, and the hummingbird comes, uh, the hummingbird sticks its beak through the hole, and there's sugar water inside, and hummingbirds go crazy for sugar water. So um, the hummingbird sticks its beak through the hole, and sips the sugar water, it also has a guard, and sometimes hummingbirds sit down on the guard, and sometimes they keep flying. Also, if you want to have Orioles, there's, you can get an Oriole Okay. Um, also, if you want to attract Orioles while they're, um, while they're migrating through, they migrate through... Texas every um, every winter or spring. Um, there's this um, 
Oreo feeder. It's kind of like a bird feed, uh, hummingbird feeder. But on the, there's, you know, there's, um, uh, sugar water. And, and inside. And then on the top, there's holes for them to seek their beaks in. But they're bigger than the hummingbird feeder holes. So the Orioles can stick their beaks in because Orioles also really like sugar. Um, there's also uh, little like baskets that you can fill with um, that you can fill with grape jelly that the Orioles can get to. Also at the top, you can see there's oranges. Also, if you want to have a uh, a uh, essential, a uh, uh, perfect bird spot, you will probably want to have a bird bath. Birds need water, so more than anything else, they need water, so if you can have water here, that would be perfect, because you have a bird bath, put some rocks in it, um, have something down here. This has a mister, except uh, my grandparents' mister isn't working right now, so usually this would be spraying mist all over the place with the water. They prefer moving water, but still water is fine, so yeah, you'll probably want to have a bird bath if you want to get birds. Okay. Another thing. Recording. So here we have a really nice birdhouse. Um, it is built for a smaller bird. Um, you have to make sure the hole is is just right for the bird, the kind of bird you want. So if it's a, if it's like um, I don't know a chickeny, you want it to be pretty small, like this. If it's a bluebird. You'd want it to be maybe a little bit bigger. So we have a sloping roof to keep the water off. Um, we also have this lock. So this lock keeps the predators out, but you can still see inside the bird, the birdhouse. If you take this down. So this is a nest we had two years ago or one year ago. Um, So there was, we'll find that later, but there was, um, little, there was a, um, a bird in here, uh, I think it was a titmouse or a chickadee, but then also we have, there was, you know, little birds, um, they'll, they'll build their nest in here, uh, they like, they like rough wood in, on the inside, so, yeah. titmouse nest from two years ago uh, so yeah they like dark places to hide um, they like rough the rough ceiling as well the rough walls so if you want to have birds staying in your house like chickadees which are nice uh, this is probably one of the birdhouses you want. Okay, so now um, we have another birdhouse that my grandparents set up. This is an owl house. An owl house. Um, you want it to be high in the 
tree. It's you want the the uh hole to be about I don't know. It looks about three inches. So you want it to be like that. Um, a big birdhouse. So probably twice as big as the um as the one over there. All right. Actually, time to get out of the field. <laughs> okay, so now, um, now we're gonna do some bird watching. Um, the secret to bird watching is don't make a lot of noise. You don't want to make a lot of noise. Um, so. Make sure, because you don't want to scare the birds away. The birds will pretty much ignore you if you make little noise and, you know, and, and you slow. Don't make any sudden movements or noises. There is a cardinal, I think, up in this tree. to see you have to like you have to put your binoculars directly at I am where is it okay um here we are we've got you can see there's a lot of birds um and you can see all of this stuff working um once you have it set up, it'll work really well. Once you've gotten used to it, to, all, to everything you have to do. Um, so, here we have our bird feeder. There was a whole bunch of birds on it until I came over here and started talking. One. All right, so there you have it. Um, you now have all the skills to be a, a birder. Um, and, you know, I'm 10, so if I can do it, you probably can. Um, so also be sure to check out my website, bird-e.me, all lowercase, where I sell my bird, my bird drawings online. Um, so... Yeah, um, uh, I'll be doing many episodes, so I'll see you next time. Happy birdie, everyone. Happy birdie. Yeah, okay, I'm going to do it again. All right, just, just, just go from that. Happy birding. All right, so I'll see you next time. Happy birding, everyone.